after Buchenwald, we had to return to the normal duties of fighting the Germans and uh, cross-occupying Germany. And that we did. We went through Germany and uh, passed through the Siegfried Line. The Siegfried Line, like the Normandy coast, had been set up to repel any invaders. They had what were called dragon's teeth, which were implanted in the earth at angles so that if any tank hit it, it would become hung up on it. They, they had millions of mines all over, and the feeling was that uh, no American could ever get through. As it turned out, the Americans did pretty much what the Germans had done in France. Instead of bucking it head on, they went around it and actually got into Czechoslovakia. In the Sudetenland, Hitler had claimed and his propaganda asserted that the Germans who lived there, and there were many of them, were oppressed and uh, abused by the native Czechoslovakians, or Czechs or Slovaks, they were two groups. He used that as an excuse to send troops across the border to free the Sudeten Germans. But he never stopped there. He just kept going and occupied all of Czechoslovakia. When I arrived in Czechoslovakia, in some of the mansions which were occupied by Germans, there were linens and trunks, crystal, silverware in the attic. Every house was just stuffed full of treasures which they hadn't been able to get through or get rid of before the Americans occupied the city. And a lot of the men in my outfit and others took silverware and linens and managed to ship them home. But uh, that clearly was looting. Looting was forbidden. I never did it. First thing we did in Ega was to demand that all of the Germans resident there discard their weapons in the central courtyard of the city hall. And they did. They lined up, filled the streets with their weapons, dumped them into the central courtyard, which when I got there had weapons filling the entire ground area, reaching up to the second story. A tremendous pile, tens of thousands of rifles, pistols, swords, sabers. And I walked down that street before they had divested themselves with my dog, and uh, I could see curtains being pushed aside, people looking out. And I knew it was kind of dangerous, but uh, I wanted to do it, and I did it. I also picked out of this pile of uh, weapons a rifle. Nothing fancy, but I felt it was a good, honest, accurate, well-made rifle, and I, I brought it home. I still have it. As the war was about to end, the Russians were approaching from the east, the Americans from the west, and tens of thousands of Germans were caught in between, and they wanted to escape the Russians. They knew because of the millions of Russians they killed that the Russians would want revenge. And so they were very anxious to be taken instead by the Americans, and tens of thousands of them fled towards the American line. My outfit was in a manner right on that line. And I looked across and saw thousands and thousands of Germans approaching and decided I wanted to get close to the action. And when I did, they sat down on the fields on both sides of uh, the entrance to the town, just looking deplorable, totally wasted, not knowing how they could be captured by the Russians instead of the Americans. And I took my dog, the German Shepherd this time, 
and walked out down the middle of the road between them. And I got a tremendous number of hostile, hostile looks, but nobody made a move. And I figured they wouldn't. I thought rather than kill one stupid American, they would be captured by them and taken to safety. And so I walked down this entire length past thousands and thousands, maybe ten thousands of Germans trying to get in and the dog with me. And suddenly down the road, coming in the same direction towards Ega, were four British soldiers, prisoners of war who had just escaped from their camp. And they were walking down the road hoping to make contact with us. They were gaunt. They had been mis maltreated as well. And uh, I wanted to do whatever I could for them. There's nothing I could immediately do. But I asked, one of, asked them if you drive, and one of them said, I drive. I said, well, wait here a moment. So they waited by the side of the road. And there had been an occasional car passing. As they waited there, a staff car passed. Now, a staff car is made for staff, for higher level officers. It has a seat in the back and then lower seats here. And in the front sit the driver and somebody running shotgun. And on the elevated seats in the rear, in the center is always the highest in command and his aides alongside. So I stopped this command car and it's obviously a general. I knew some of the insignias. This is in the general in the midst of two of his uh, staffers. And I said, get in what I thought was German, raus. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And I repeated, I said, raus. He said, nein, nein, nein. Ich bin ein General. I said, I don't care who the hell you are. Get out of that vehicle. And he said, I'm not going to. And I said, well, you have a choice. And I touched the Luger that I had in the shoulder holster. And I said, I give you a choice. Oder du spazieren, or du legen beim Weg tot, which was some corrupted Yiddish meaning, either you walk, or you're going to lie by the side of the road dead. And I meant it, and he knew I meant it. And since none of the Germans who were all around us made a move or said anything, I even suspected that they were on my side. So he eventually got out. The British guys got in. They drove off back to Ega. And uh, I went back too after a while. Well, for me, that was pretty much the end of the war, though it wasn't the end of the proceedings. When the war ended, we were on a point system. People with the higher points were sent home immediately by plane to England and then by ship home. I had enough points to be the first one out. I had about 25 more points than anyone else in my outfit because there was one point granted for each month in the Marines. But they declared me essential. I was essential to the attack on Japan. I could not leave with the other men from my outfit, even though I had more points than any of them. So I was put to training our replacements, where everyone else in my outfit was home. I was still replacing trainees. And the only thing I got out of it was a medal for the occupation of Germany. Now, the reason the medal was granted is that the occupation was considered highly dangerous. There were many groups of Germans, some military and some not, who had publicly stated and attempted to act on their wish to kill as many Americans as they could to drive them out of the country. And there were incidents of chains having been stretched across roads so that when a jeep passed, a head might be decapitated, their explosives set, and uh, for that reason, a medal was struck. After six months or so of training replacement, I was sent to a, uh, a camp not far from Frankfurt, as a way station on the way to Marseille. 
that Marseille would take the a ship to uh, the Japanese area. And while we were there, waiting transportation, and in mud up to my knees, the bomb was dropped. Two bombs were dropped, and the war was over. But I was nowhere near any celebration. Uh, the GIs at that point were isolated, uh, remorseful, resenting what had been done to us. Oh, happy that uh, we weren't, weren't going to Japan, but still, there was no celebration in the mud. And finally, we were released from there. I was taken to Frankfurt and put on a bomber into England, and from there, a ship home. So after all that time that you served in Europe, if it hadn't been for the dropping of the two atomic bombs, you would have been spent in, in Japan. That's right. Oh, no, although the invasion never took place. Right. We never invaded Japan. Right, because of the, the atomic bombs. Yeah. But we had been prepared for it, and we had been told to expect a million casualties. It was felt that the dead and wounded and missing on any invasion of Japan would involve a million casualties. Why? Because every time an island was captured, the Japanese fought to the death. And they weren't even... Uh, defending their own homeland, their, their families, and the emperor. They were just defending a miserable piece of land out in the middle of the ocean. So when they were fighting for their country, their emperor, their family, and their land, it was known that they would be totally devilish in their defense. They would do anything to kill Americans and gladly give up their own lives. That was a part of what they were taught during the war will probably proceeded in their history, that it's glorious to die for the emperor and that it's the only acceptable death for a Japanese. What was your reaction when you heard about those bombs being dropped? When I heard about the bombs being dropped, I couldn't have been more elated. I felt that a million of us would have died, not to mention 20 million Japanese which was the semi-official expected number. I felt here, this is a blessing for them as well as for us.